What's up guys, Justin here with TheCGEssentials.com back with another Blender beginner tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna kick off a, a series introducing you to Blender. So we're gonna talk about how the workspace is set up, how you can get Blender installed, and how we can start modeling in 3D inside of Blender. So um, I'm really excited to kick this series off. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments down below. I'd love to try to help out, but let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so first things first, Blender is always rolling out new versions. So they're always adding new features and working on making the program bigger and better. Um, so this version that I am teaching in is Blender 2.82. If you have a newer version of Blender, it may look a little bit different. In general, all of the principles we talk about in this series are going to be applicable, but your workspace may look a little bit different depending on the version that you have. So um, let's go ahead. And so I'm gonna start off real quick. Let's just talk about how to download and install Blender. So you can always download Blender by visiting blender.org and uh, you can download this. This page may look a little bit different depending on the version that they have at any given time, but generally speaking on this front page, you're gonna wanna look for the option for download Blender. There's also usually a tab up here that says download. So if you wanna download this, you can do this. Note that Blender is free and uh, they are not planning on changing that ever. So Blender should always be free. You should always be able to download it. So if you click on this button right here, that's gonna take you to a page where you can download the installer. So this big button right here will download your Windows installer. There's also different options over here for your different operating systems. You can also download Blender through Steam if you want to. In this situation, we're just gonna go ahead and click on this button. That's gonna download an installer file, which you can then run in order to install Blender on your computer. And so when you first run Blender, you're gonna get a screen that looks something like this. It may look a little bit different. Um, this image may change. Generally speaking though, this is gonna be the screen that's gonna kick you off. And so you can see how it's got options in here for new files, so creating new files, as well as accessing recent files that you've had in the past. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, under new file, we're gonna click on the button for general. So that's just gonna open up a default file. Note that yours may look a little bit different than mine, just I have a custom default model in here. This is uh, my Border Collie Bonnie. Um, but for most of you, you're gonna have a cube when you first open this up. So that's gonna be your default model unless you've created some kind of a custom default model inside of Blender. And so let's take a quick look at the Blender workspace just to kind of orient ourselves um, to the workspace itself. So at the top of the page, you have your file bar. That's gonna contain all of the things you would expect. So things like uh, opening new files, uh, saving your files, importing and exporting, other things like that. So you've also got different tabs in here. Your edit is gonna have your undo and your redo, your preferences. Um, your render is going to be where you're going to export rendered images. And then window allows you to adjust your different windows and workspaces in here, as well as help. So if you're ever looking for help, um, you can click on the button for manual, which will open up uh, the website, or you can click the button for tutorials in order to open up Blender's tutorials section. Note that Blender has a really good collection of beginner tutorials in here. So if you do wanna get started and learn more, um, obviously I'm gonna to try to cover as much as I can on this channel, but if you're looking for more resources, this is another good place to get started. And so to the right of your file bar, you've got options over here for your different workspaces. And so basically what these do is these open different workspaces that are customized for different things. So like for example, the sculpting workspace has all of your sculpting tools off to the left-hand side so that you can come in here and start sculpting and moving things around. Um, your UV editing is gonna be set up for applying textures based on UVs in your model. So each one of these is basically a customized it's basically a customized workspace for different kinds of things. So the animation, for example, has custom windows set up in here so that you can preview animations and work with your dope sheet down below and uh, really kind of customize. That, that workspace is customized towards that application. So there's a number of different workspaces in here. You can also create your own by clicking on the plus button right here. Really all these are is saved um, save configurations of different windows. So all of these windows are adjustable to different tools. And then you can just set this up the way that you want. You can click the plus button to create your own if you wanna do that. 
So now let's take a closer look at our actual 3D modeling workspace. So if you look at this down below, um, basically what you see here is you've got a 3D workspace which contains your 3D model, then you've got a couple windows off to the side that have different kinds of options. So for example, this window right here is your outliner and it shows you information about the things that are currently inside of your model. So for example, I have a camera here and then my plane that's that's the object that I used in order to create this model of Bonnie. So I haven't renamed it, but you can see how you can select these different things over here by clicking on your outliner. So, and basically what this is, is this is just three windows um, inside a blender. You can custom, or you can add different windows as well just by clicking and dragging in here. So just mouse over this with a plus. And then if you wanna get rid of them, you just right click on the area um, or the divider between the areas and you can join these. So you can really customize your workspace inside of Blender. And then for each one of these windows, there's this little drop down right here that's going to show your editor type. And so by default, this one over here is your properties, which you're gonna use a lot, but you can also use this to select other different kinds of uh, editors as well. So, but by default, you've got your outliner over here You've got your 3D workspace, which is where you can actually see what you're doing in 3D. And then you've got your properties over here. And your properties is gonna allow you to adjust everything from your rendering properties to your different materials that are in here. You can add modifiers and work with those. There's a lot of different things you're gonna do in this properties bar, which we will get into in a future video. So, and then over here in your 3D workspace, um, let's take a closer look at that. So your 3D workspace is gonna have a number of tools off to the left hand side and depending on what mode you're in you're gonna have different tools that show up so for example if I was to hit tab right now that takes me into edit mode and I get a different set of tools on the left hand side whenever I do that so you're gonna have tools for actually editing your 3d model over here and you're also gonna have some menu options over here that allow you to do different things like adjusting the properties of your object adding new object messing with your selection a lot of different things like that um, we will talk about this stuff more um, a little bit later, but this allows you to turn on things like proportional editing and the way that things snap and other things like that. And then on the right hand side, you've got basically a number of tabs over here that are different menus. And you may see more or less of these depending on what you have installed, but you also have like a 3D navigation gizmo that you can click and drag in order to adjust your view or you can click on these in order to get your straight up and down um, like orthographic views and other things like that. So you can adjust your view using this. You can also adjust different things with like different kinds of visibility. So you can set if things like lights are gonna be um, turned on and shown in here. You can adjust things like um, the different gizmos that are shown in here. Um, but the one you're gonna use a lot of is adjusting the viewport shading type. So on the right hand side over here, you can see how um, by clicking on these different options, you can change the way that things are displayed inside of your 3D viewport. So for example, this one gives you a material preview. Um, this one is just going to show the faces that are in here. And then your uh, wireframe is just gonna show the edges that are in here. So you can see how you can use this to adjust the way that your viewport looks. Um, you can also turn on rendering by clicking on this button right here. And right now we don't have a light in here, so it's very dark, but this is also how you're gonna use, um, you're gonna use your render preview mode in order to see what your rendering is gonna look like. So these little menus right here allow you to turn different things off like different add-ons and adjust your view. We'll talk more about those in a future video. Um, note that you can either show or hide these by tapping the N key on your keyboard. And then down below by default, this also has your uh, video playback or your animation timeline down below. So if you're creating animations, this timeline is in here by default. So now let's talk a little bit about how we're gonna create and work with 3D objects inside of Blender. So we're gonna start by talking a little bit about object mode. And object mode is basically the mode inside of Blender where you're going to adjust different things. So you're basically going to move and adjust your objects inside of object mode. There's also a mode in here called edit mode, which you can access either by tapping tab on your keyboard or by clicking this drop down. You can see how there's some other modes in here as well. But generally speaking, as a beginner, you're gonna start with object and edit mode. And so object mode is where we're going to interact with different objects 
inside of Blender. And so the way that Blender manages objects is it brings them all in here as different objects and then from there you can actually edit them and edit their geometry inside of edit mode. Or all of the 3D things that you add in object mode are considered separate objects inside of Blender. We can get more into that in a future video, but for now let's go ahead and add something into our model. So let's start by going up and clicking on this button right here for add. And let's add a mesh. And in this situation, we'll add a UV sphere. So we're just gonna click and add this. First thing you're gonna notice is this kind of puts these in in a random place if you don't understand how this stuff is getting added inside of Blender. So if you look at your workspace, you can see how what this did is this added a sphere object um, into your 3D workspace. So it's kind of big. We're gonna have to edit it to make it a little bit smaller, but notice that now the object is in here and it also shows up in your outliner. So, and notice that this gets highlighted whenever you've selected it. So by left clicking on it, you can select the object inside of Blender. So when you select the object, you can see how there's not a whole lot in here right now, but this gets highlighted. So you can use your, um, you can use your uh, outliner over here in order to select different things. Um, and from there, you can then adjust them. And so notice that when this placed the sphere, it placed the sphere centered on where this little, uh, this little object is that has the uh, dotted line and then the axes crossing just like this. And so basically the way that Blender adds new objects is it adds them centered on this 3D cursor. And so whenever you add something, it's going to get added wherever your 3D cursor is by default. And you can adjust where your 3D cursor is by doing a shift right click or by clicking on this little cursor button right here and then clicking somewhere inside of your model. So now if I was to add another object, like let's say a cube, you can see how that object is gonna get added centered on where this 3D cursor is. So you can use the 3D cursor to set where objects are going to come in in your model. And we can talk a little bit more about that in the future. But one thing to notice is when you first add these objects, notice that you get a number of different options over here for things you can adjust. So when I first add in my cube, so when I do an add cube, you can see how this is gonna give me some different options that I can adjust. So for example, I can click and drag this in order to adjust the size of my cube. So if I wanted this to be one meter, I could just type in a value of one. So you can also adjust things like your location either by typing in values or by clicking and dragging these little bars in here. And notice that when, if you're going to use these options, you wanna go ahead and use them when you're first bringing your object in because it can get kind of tricky to um, come back in here a little bit later and try to edit that. So you can see how that menu doesn't really pop back up. So there are some ways to kind of get the menu to pop back up, but in general, you wanna make sure when you first add an object that you make whatever adjustments you want in the menu um, before you do anything else. And so now we have our objects inside of our 3D workspace. And since we're in object mode, what we can do is we can take these objects and we can move them around and adjust them. And you can see how there's a number of different tools over here on the left-hand side of your screen for doing that. So for example, um, if I wanted to move my sphere around, I can select my sphere, I can click on this button, and that's gonna activate the move tool. Notice how when I activate the move tool, what I get is I get these, uh, these different arrows in here on lines, and I can use them to move things up, down, left, right, things like that. And so you can use this little gizmo that pops up in order to move this around. See how you can also click and drag on this little red box, for example, to move this up and down on the, you can use this to move this up and down by clicking and dragging on any of these. The other thing that you're gonna notice when you watch different tutorials and other things like that on Blender is a lot of people use keyboard shortcuts in order to access these tools. And the reason they do that is because it's a lot faster to access the tools by doing this. So for example, instead of using the move tool here, what I might do is I might tap the G key. And so notice when I tap the G key, what that does is that activates the move tool. And now I can move this object around inside of my 3D workspace. Um, the problem with this right now though is it's not very precise in the sense that I can't really control very well in the 3D workspace where this is going along the red 
green and blue axes. And so what we can do is we can use what's known as inference locking. And so the way that that works is when I activate this tool by tapping the G key, and if I tap X, Y, or Z, so like for example, if I tap X, you can see how I can move this object along just the X axis because I've locked it to that axis. I can also tap the Y key in order to move my mouse around on the Y axis or the Z key to move this up and down. You can also exclude an axis by tapping shift in an axis. So for example, if I didn't want to move this up or down, but I wanted to move it on kind of like this flat plane, I could do a shift Z and move my mouse around. And notice that as long as I don't click, I can adjust the different, uh, I can adjust the different inference locking by tapping a new key. So there's other things you can tap in here as well, which we'll talk about in the future. But just notice that a lot of the time you're gonna see people using those keyboard shortcuts. I would really recommend that you try to learn those and use those because they're gonna make you a lot faster. Um, so another thing a lot of people do is it's kind of hard to see where things are in the 3D workspace. Um, so what a lot of people do is they click on one of these views or they tap a key on their numpad. So for example, if I type in a one or a three, you can see how I'm getting these different views in here. And then they'll move the object along the axes to make sure that they're aligned, just like this. So if you go into this, uh, this uh, straight on view, then it's a lot easier to make sure that things are actually where you want them to be in 3D. And so in addition to being able to move things around in the 3D workspace, there's also options in here to rotate or scale these objects. There's also a transform tool over here. But for example, let's say we were to take our cube, activate the rotate tool. You can see how this gives you this gizmo right here. And you can click and drag this in order to rotate this object in 3D. So I can use this to rotate it along the green axis, along the blue axis, basically however I want. And notice that you also get a little menu over here that pops up when you do this. So you can be precise or you can also tap the R key in order to rotate this object as well. So again, there's always a keyboard shortcut and we're gonna use that in this situation. And you can also type in values. So for example, let's say I wanted to rotate this. I could tap the R key. I could tap the Z key to rotate it along the blue axis. And then I could type in a value like 180 and hit the enter key. So you can also type in numbers of degrees that you wanna rotate different objects. So, and we'll talk more about this in the future. Just know that a lot of the time using those keyboard shortcuts is going to save you a ton of time. And then the last thing I wanna talk about in this video is you can also scale objects. So you can make them bigger or smaller. So you can see how you can do this either by tapping on the scale key and then clicking and dragging, or you can also tap the S key and move your mouse around. So notice if you tap the S key, and then you move your mouse that this is live, and you could type in a value of like two. So if you wanted this to be twice as big, you could type S2, enter. If you wanted it to be half as big, you could type S.5, enter. So you can see how you can scale and move these different objects in here as well. And notice that you can also come in here, and I'm gonna go ahead and set this back on the select box for right now. But notice that you can come back in here and you can also scale along an axis by using the axis locking. So you can see how I can come in here and I can scale this in and out by tapping S. And then like Y, for example, that'll scale this only along the Y axis. If I wanted to scale it along Z, then I could tap the Z axis. And so you can make all of these changes inside of object mode. And so basically what this allows you to do is this allows you to make changes to the overall object itself. In the next video, we're gonna talk about edit mode. What edit mode is gonna do is that's going to allow you to edit different parts and pieces of this object. So for example, things like coming in here and only editing and scaling out part of this. Um, is something that you would do in edit mode where you're actually changing the shape instead of applying a uniform modifier to the whole thing. So we will talk more about that in the next video. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Did you learn something? Or do you have any questions? Um, feel free to leave a comment down below if you have any questions on anything or if you got stuck. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content 
every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.